This is the run and meet video for athletic.net's EMM XC. This video assumes that you have already downloaded the EMM XC and are ready to use it for your meet. If you need help downloading the EMM XC, watch the video EMM XC intro. The first step for running your meet with the EMM XC is to and download the entries and schools into the EMM XC from athletic.net. First of all, let's pull up athletic.net, go to our school, click on the meet we want to run, in this case the New Hope Invitational. You'll notice that the meet that I'm hosting has meet host tools. If you do not see this on your meet, it is because you have not designated yourself as the meet host on the edit meet information page. I have, so I have these tools. Let's click download entries. Here you will see that I have my meet ID and key for the athletic.net Excel meet manager. I want to either write these down or copy and paste them into the Excel meet manager. Now let's pull up the EMM XC. Enable macros. If you need help with this, watch the video enabling macros and then enter our meet ID and key here. I will go ahead and use the trial meet ID and key so that I have more entries and schools to play with. After that, click Save and then Download Meet. The meet has been downloaded successfully. OK. There is a newer version available. Typically, you would want to download this new version and then re-download your meet into this new version. For this, this video, I will click No. Let's first of all check out our schools, make sure they look good. I also need to add a school, which I will do at the bottom. Test school. All schools must have abbreviations for scoring. All other information is optional, for your, basically for your use. Let's check out the entries. They look like they are probably in order. I also need to add an entry. Test athlete, who is a sophomore male from test school. I don't need to worry about the scoring division since I am not in the advanced scoring mode. Once you are ready to enter times and results for your race, go to the race setup sheet. Make sure the information for your race is correct. Let's look at race number one. It's a high school race, females, open division, and it's 5,000 meters long. I could change this to 5, 000, 5 kilometers if I preferred. Start time is 11 a.m. and the title looks like I want it to. So I'm ready to initialize race. Click this Initialize Race on the EMM XC menu, and then enter the race number for the race you want to run. I want to do race number one, so I enter one, and then click OK. It will then copy from the template, which could take up to a minute if you have a very large race. Our template has now been copied, so we are ready to enter results. I can either enter times first or the athlete number first, whichever I prefer. I'm going to start with the athlete number. Fifteen, nineteen, twenty-five, twenty-eight, thirty, fifty, fifty-six, fifty-four, and two. You'll notice that when I enter athlete number two, it is flagged. This is because it is a duplicate athlete. Let's change that to athlete three. That is also a duplicate. Let's try one. All right, that worked. Say the next athlete forgot their name tag or lost it during the race. We could look them up using the names right here. However, in, this, in a large race, this is a very slow method, so we definitely recommend using athlete numbers as a preferred method. These are right now sorted by sorted alphabetically by first name. However, you could sort them alphabetically by last name if you change your config options on the config sheet. So let's choose Aaron Jordan. 
You'll notice that Aaron Jordan is bolded over here and not here. This lets me know that I entered him as the name and not by athlete number. If I want to get rid of him, I need to delete the bolded um, name or athlete number. In other words, deleting Jade Backmire will have no effect. I have to delete one instead. Oops, Aaron is a male. This is a female race. Probably we should change his gender. We simply change it right here. If we made a mistake, we can simply delete the gender and return to the default. Same is true of the school and the year. We are now ready to enter times. The EMMXT can take times either in with colons or periods. Example, 10.10 .10 works as does 10 colon 12. 10.4 does not work and will be flagged as invalid. 10.10 .10 is faster than the previous time and will also be flagged. 10.60 is also an invalid time and should be written as 11 minutes. For time's sake, I will drag and drop the rest of these times. After the athletes and times have been entered, you can now score your race. But do this by clicking score. As you can see, we have two complete teams with at least five runners and two incomplete teams with less than five runners. We are now ready to print results for our race. To do this, you need to be on the race sheet as we are for your race and click the printer icon on the EMMXC menu. This brings you to the print dialog box where you can either print by clicking OK or you can preview your race results. Let's preview it. It looks pretty good but let's not print at the moment. I also want to look at the team scores so let's click yes and preview that. And that's it. You can now initialize other races by going back to Race Setup and initializing them and entering results for them. After the end of the meet, you can then upload your finished meet back to athletic.net, saving yourself and other coaches hours of time by entering all the results at once. To do this, click Upload Finished Meet, then OK. This pulls up the athletic.net upload page for your meet. We will click browse for the results file. The results file will be stored in the same folder as your EMMXC was. In my case I had it in my documents and then in the XC meets folder. EMMXC export dash 4157 where 4157 is my meet ID is my export. I'll open that and then upload file. From there, simply follow the upload instructions on the athletic.net upload page. It's as easy as that. If you have more questions, let us know, and enjoy.